Hey everyone, Pugs here with two new reviews for y'all. Today, I'm covering Sailor Mouth and Artist Unknown, and these are two pretty, I don't know, I'm gonna just say iconic, I always say iconic, but I'm gonna say it again, iconic episodes of season two. I mean, Sailor Mouth is Sailor Mouth, and Artist Unknown has Bold and Brash, so that's enough for me to say iconic. And these are both episodes that I also enjoy, so I'm excited to go ahead and review them. And as always, just want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching, liking, commenting. Y'all know the drill. I always say this. And yeah, with all of that said, let's just get right into these reviews. Fresh off the worst episode of this season, we have one of the better ones, Sailor Mouth. This is simply an iconic episode. I don't even need to say it. Especially with talks about that lost tape of cast members actually cursing, entering conversation again, this episode is often near the top of people's minds when they think of this show. And for good reason. It's simply a good episode. Cursing episodes of children's TV shows can either be very good or very bad, I've noticed, and it all depends on how it's done. And I think this episode does it very well. First off, I like that they use dolphin sounds to censor the bad words in this episode and later like crashes and horns, which is much better than a simple beep or an annoying car horn or something. It's perfect for the environment of this show. I also like the way that Spongebob discovered the bad word on the side of a dumpster, because honestly, yeah, I could see that being where the little yellow sponge first discovers cursing. I also really like the visuals in this scene. They reuse the beautiful pizza delivery background, which I love, and... The outside at night looks good as always. Seriously, the background art in this show is some of the best I've seen, and they always do a great job with characters' color palettes as well. And I've also learned that apparently they do name the background characters in the credits, so if I start name dropping, I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, I like Patrick in this episode a lot. It's a huge improvement from the previous episode, that's for sure, and it kind of gives me whiplash. His misunderstanding of curse words as sentence enhancers is so funny concerning how true it is. Cursing doesn't make you fancy, but it certainly enhances those sentences. And this is coming from me, someone who curses like a sailor in the real world, so I'm basically right, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Cut to the next scene, where Spongebob and Patrick are just loudly cursing everywhere, and I think everyone's reactions are pretty funny, and provide some great visuals in terms of how everyone just like freezes in place. I like how Squidward has to like pat down his comically large ear too, like that's just a great touch. Mr. Krabs' panicked run out of the bathroom is great as well, and you know, Mr. Krabs is really at top form this episode as a father figure to Spongebob and to a lesser extent Patrick. The lecture he gives them is great, and I love that his friendship with Squidward is shown as he jokes with the squid about the 13 bad words. Next, we cut to Spongebob and Patrick playing eels and escalators, which is probably the weakest part of this episode. I start to feel frustrated as Spongebob uh, when he loses every role, but at least Patrick isn't fanning the flames of that annoyance, so it keeps the scene enjoyable. It just isn't a super funny scene, so that makes the episode lose a couple points of me. I like how Spongebob has already caught on to using curse words and frustration. Such a masterful swearer, if I do say so myself. Patrick's reaction is hilarious, and I love the ensuing race the two get into to try and tell Mr. Krabs. The ice cream truck part is too funny. I also love how the two's tattling to Mr. Krabs gets turned into babbling, and Mr. Krabs literally just has to like grab their mouths to get them to shut up. <laughs> and quickly talking about the rest of the episode, I love that Mr. Krabs ends up cursing with all the curse words, complete with a great painting of Spongebob with uh, 13 fingers. And so Spongebob and Patrick take, uh, turn their tattling towards him. I also love that we end up getting a fake-out curse from Mrs. Krabs, using the same logic we've been hearing all episode about curse words being covered up with some loud sound. It makes me think that maybe the dolphin sound and the crashing and horn sounds are the curse words itself. I mean, people say barnacles and tartar sauce all the time in this show, and they aren't treated as curse words. I don't know, I think I'm onto something right there. Anyway, Sailor Mouth is a really good episode that only has one dull moment. The beginning of the episode is an excellent setup to the hilarity that we'll be seeing for the rest of the runtime, and all of this together means that this episode is in my amazing tier, coming in with a score of 9 out of 10. Next up, we've got a good episode in Artist Unknown. It's not too good, not too bad, but better than average. Or, I guess it's average for a show like Spongebob Squarepants. This is going to be a pretty short review because I don't really have all that much to say this time around, so I'll just go ahead and get into it now. 
Squidward is pretty good in this episode, being as full of himself as he is. I also just like how he's he was in a different little outfit for the whole episode. I just love it. We don't really get to see wardrobe changes that much in this show, so I cherish the ones that we do see. How he managed to get a job teaching art, I have no idea, but good for him. <laughs> this episode is great for those of us like me, who like when it's emphasized that all the main characters other than Pearl are adults. I've said this probably like a hundred times now, but that doesn't make it any less true. Considering that the bulk of this episode takes place at the Adult Learning Center, I'm sure you can see why I'm saying this again today. It's not very often in these early seasons that we see Squidward and Spongebob interact outside of Conch Street or the Krusty Krab, so I'm also loving the different setting here for that reason too. I love how enthusiastic Spongebob is in the beginning of this episode, at least until Squidward breaks his spirit, <laughs> and I guess that's my main issue with this episode other than it being dull in some places. Squidward is just like a bit too mean in this episode. He does show some regret when Spongebob originally runs off, but that's abandoned in favor of greed and desire for fame and fortune, which I'm not exactly a fan of. Squidward, I suppose though, does get his pun does get his comeuppance by having his masterpiece born out of rage and frustration be mistakenly claimed to be someone else's. The side characters in this episode are really funny too. The janitor is great, bringing Squidward's dramatics back down to earth as he should. And then of course we have Monty P. Moneybags, who has a ridiculous accent, great design, and amazing lines. This episode is the source of a lot of iconic moments, such as Bold and Brash, and to a lesser extent, the ending of this episode. I have to spend another second on Bold and Brash too, because Squidward's painting here has given me a Pavlovian reaction to laugh every time I see it now. <laughs> I used to have a sticker of it on my computer, fun fact. Not anymore though. But my partner did gift me a Bold and Brash canvas painting, so that's like infinitely better than a measly old sticker bought off Redbubble. Okay, that's enough personal information. Let's move on. I gotta stay as anonymous as possible. It's scary out here, you know? So that's all you're getting from me. Anyway, there isn't much else to talk about for Artist Unknown. Unfortunately, this episode suffers from having lots of big funny moments throughout, but then being rather dull in between those moments, such as when Squidward is teaching Spongebob at first, or especially when Squidward gets Spongebob to come back. The story is engaging enough that I don't mind too much though, but all of this does mean that this episode sits comfortably in my good tier, coming in with a score of 7.5 out of 10. As always, just wanted to end with some closing thoughts of mine. And shit, I think this is my shortest review yet. There really wasn't much for me to say about these episodes. And I'm sure that could come as a surprise, especially for Sailor Mouth, because, you know, everyone has so much to say about Sailor Mouth, but I really don't. You know, I like it, but obviously it's not my favorite of the season. I just gave it a 9 out of 10. So it's like, I really don't have that much to say. And an artist unknown, like I just said, it's a pretty average episode. I mean, it's really good, but it's still pretty average. So there's really not much for me to say about that one either. So it's just an unfortunate pairing of sister episodes for anyone who likes me to have longer reviews. But yeah, I mean, I really think that's all I have to say. I have no closing thoughts. So I'll just go ahead and end the review here. And I will see you guys in the next review.